What is going on, Miami Dolphins fans? A little impromptu video today. The news just continues to keep piling in for our Miami Dolphins. We had the initial 53-man roster. We've had a couple of different changes going on with IR and guys getting added here and there. And then the news just continues to add on and add in. I've got three main things that I'm going to talk about today. Get you back up to speed in case you missed anything from Thursday. Before I start, though, the three stories that I'm going to hit on, one involves Tyreek Hill, another one involves Alec Ingold, and then the latest, the last one involves guys like Jalen Ramsey that were put on IR today and what that means for the team. So let me know your thoughts on those three headlines from today, and we'll continue to take it from there. But let's start with the Tyreek Hill news, because as we all know, we had that incident on the Marina, what was that, a, a month or so ago now, a couple of months ago now. We all kind of wondered, though, man, after we saw what ended up going down in the past with different players that get involved in these allegations with uh, uh, Elvin Kamara getting his suspension handing down, what is going to happen to Tyreek Hill? Well, we learned that Tyreek avoided any sort of uh, suspension from the 2023 NFL season. He was excused from the last two practices for the Miami Dolphins. I sort of thought, you know, maybe this is related to a meeting or a hearing with Commissioner Roger Goodell. I'm not saying that it was. I'm just saying, like, maybe there was something there, and that's why he was getting excused. Like I said, that was just me speculating. Not sure if that's relevant or not. But regardless, good news for us as Miami Dolphins fans, we are going to have a suspension-free Tyreek Hill for 2023. Let's get on to the next news item of the day. Because the Miami Dolphins also extended fullback Alec Ingold. I believe he is 27 years old. He just had a birthday in July. But it's a three-year extension worth up to $17.2 million. Now, it's interesting because you're going to get some people that say, well, why are you paying a fullback? Because fullback is honestly one of those positions that a lot of NFL teams don't play, don't pay for. Then they sure as hell don't even roster. But there's a difference between a fullback playing for a team such as maybe the Cincinnati Bengals and the Miami Dolphins, and that's because of what we ask our fullback to do. He is an extension of the run game and the pass game and the offense just in general. We didn't get the full real glimpse or picture of what that was last year because Ingold battled through some injuries. But you know that Mike McDaniel loves this fullback. He really has a thing for Alec Ingold, and we got him extended I believe that's now through the 2026 or 2027 NFL season because he had a year they extended three to it. But whether it's run blocking, if it's pass protection, if it's short yardage runs, we've seen him active as a pass catching option as well. Man, those OTAs, mini camps, training camp sessions, Alec Ingold was catching more passes during those sessions than we were ever used to as well from even the year before. I even go back to that week one matchup last year where he, he had that drop on that beautiful wheel route from Tua. I always think about that play. I shouldn't think about the negative plays when I think about Alec Ingold because he does so much positive for this team as well. But he is, I don't want to say he's one of these dynamic players. He's not like a Jalen Waddle or Tyreek Hill, but his importance is there. And it's for multiple reasons because you can leave this guy on the field, whether you are in a short yarded situation or just a regular first and 10, or you're setting up a deep ball. Him being on the field doesn't tip, doesn't give anything to the defense as to what you're planning to do, sort of like how it was with Mike Gesicki last year. So Alec Ingold is a nice little chess piece for a guy like Mike McDaniel to have. And one thing we might see a little bit more of, because when we did the initial roster, what do we keep? Durham Smythe and Julian Hill. Look for Alec Ingold to maybe not necessarily play like a tight end, like a traditional tight end role, but a little bit more blocking, a little bit more inline stuff where maybe he goes in motion and is an additional blocker there on the line of scrimmage, a la a tight end would do in that situation. So don't underestimate the importance of Alec Ingold. $17.2 million does sound like a lot for a fullback, but just know that when you're extending that now, and with the salary cap going up, we're probably getting a pretty good price on a guy like Alec Ingold when it's all said and done. So I talked about Jalen Ramsey heading to the IR, but he was also joined by two other players. Running back Jeff Wilson, offensive lineman Robert Jones. Now, all of these moves were essentially expected. I would say maybe a little bit outside of Jeff Wilson. We knew that he had the injury. We knew that he missed all the preseason games. So this really isn't even all that unexpected for him as well. But what this means 
because they were all kind of put on that short-term temporary IR, which means that you're going to miss at least four games. So these guys aren't eligible for their first four games. Their roster spots do open up. We'll get to that here in a second. But what I want to talk about as it relates a little bit to Jeff Wilson is maybe, maybe this opens up even a more of a door for undrafted free agent who made the team in Chris Brooks. Because if you look, it's now it's Raheem Mostert kind of as like your unquestioned starter. We didn't get Dominic Cook. We didn't get Jonathan Taylor. Jeff Wilson's on IR right now. Devon A. Chain's hurt. I mean, it, it's it's Savan Ahmed who also missed practice today as well. Devon A. Chain, who is in that red no contact jersey. Here it is with with Chris Brooks kind of having that opportunity because I talked about him when we did kind of the reaction to the initial fifty three guys, and I said, you know what? Great that he made it. It just wouldn't surprise me if he's kind of one of those like healthy game day scratch guys. That maybe could be what we see from a little bit of him in the rookie year. Maybe the opportunities won't quite be there. That might not be the case now. And plus, the more I watch this guy, the more I really like and the added elements that he brings. Because if you think who else is like the the hard runner, the short yardage runner, the effort runner? Well, it was Jeff Wilson. And now with Jeff Wilson sidelined, man, you've got a guy right there, an undrafted free agent who could come in and really have some opportunities. So we'll see how that ends up playing out and whether or not he is active on game days moving forward. But I tell you what, there's a guy that has an opportunity and he's already made a ton of being an undrafted free agent, a guy that was way under the radar when it came to making the roster. And here he is potentially with opportunity in, in, uh, in his future as well. Sorry, I got distracted there because I wanted to talk about the, the faces that were brought in for those openings because it's familiar faces. Cornerback Justin Bethel, tight end Tyler Croft, cornerback Perry Nickerson. Those are the guys that were added for the three roster spots that um, were, were made up by Jalen Ramsey, Jeff Wilson, and Robert Jones. And then just a couple of miscellaneous notes to leave you with. Um, it was Tyreek, Teron Armstead, Liam Eichenberg, Savan Ahmed, and Elijah Campbell, who were not spotted at Thursday's practice. Devon A. Chain was in that red no-contact jersey. Mike McDaniel did say he is likely to contribute, though, next week. And then the best news, what thumb do I got to use that one? Our boy uh, Jalen Waddle back at practice today for the first time since getting that injury in the joint practice against the Atlanta Falcons. So we are pointing towards all systems go for week one for him as well. That is what I've got for today. Like I said, a little impromptu action in today's video, but go ahead, drop your thoughts, comments in the comment section. That is what it's there for. We'll be back predicting the predicting the, the season, all the dolphin stuff, Dolphins uh, Pro Bowl award winners for the NFL, all that good stuff as we get set to prepare ourselves for the LA Chargers. That is what I've got for today, Dolphins fans. And until next time, Fins out.